All right, everybody okay? Everybody's all right. Oh, you're not good today, I tell you. You, you, camp, you got your camp legs, huh? Mm-hmm. Is that what it is? You're kind of like the players. They, they got their camp legs, too. Uh, particularly yesterday, they were dragging a little bit. I had to try to push them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, one of the things they have to do is learn to push themselves in that tough situation. You know, they're, they're tired, they're beat up, they got some bumps and bruises, uh, they're sore, and uh, so you have to be able to work through it. You know, there are going to be tough situations in the games, and so uh, they got to be able to uh, and have to learn to push themselves and make themselves go at the level they need to go at uh, so that they can perform. So uh, even though practice yesterday wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, um, I think that they, it can be a, a learning experience for uh, a lot of the young guys and for the team in general. Um, you have to be able to, to finish. Uh, it's not over until that final whistle blows. And so both sides of the ball had, uh, had some ups and downs. And um, so we got to get those straightened out, ironed out, and see if we can do better today, which we will try to do. Um, what else do I have for you? We still have the injury situation, all right? Uh, Flowers is not going to be doing anything. I'm waiting on Siler to see what he's going to do today because if his ankle feels good, he'll go. Um, if it's not good, then um, they'll probably hold him out. Um, and then we still got Bannon and uh, Johnson uh, who are not working today and uh, Hemingway as well. Uh, those guys are not working. Uh, Jock Reeves did report uh, yesterday and uh, and he's in camp and he has his acclimation period that he has to go through uh, then we'll get him on the field. Uh, Donald Washington who missed yesterday he's back today and uh, he'll be working today. Um, but uh, like I said that these guys being able to push through the tough times and deal with different circumstances whether it be heat, uh, wind, rain, you name it, you know, you had to be able to deal with it and, and uh, have to go. So, uh, so I think that they'll have a good practice today um, because it's a little bit earlier and as it works out, we have to uh, give them a day off tomorrow. So they'll take a day off and they have that to look forward to. Uh, also, you know, today being family fun day, uh, I think that many of the families will be here to, to watch practice and um, being able to spend some time with the families and, and maybe have dinner with the families and things like that uh, will be good for them. And so uh, that's that's kind of where we are, you know. Um, so but then after the day off, then we're into game week, you know. And believe it or not, we'll be playing a game uh, next Friday. Uh, so uh, I mentioned that to those guys as well, that um, the game will be here before they know it. And so they have to get as much done as they can to improve their game um, before Friday night. So that's what they need to focus on and concentrate on and try to get done. Okay. Who do you got for me? <laughs> yeah, everybody around here is talking about getting off so fast start this season. Do you change any way that you approach these four preseason games to try to facilitate that? Maybe more game planning than you normally would or, or more play time for starters than you normally would? Uh, no, I, I, I think that you build during the preseason and so that's what we'll do uh, with with the starters Uh, we'll build with the starters and and gradually give them more time uh, as we go through the preseason but you know part of the preseason is to try to evaluate the young players to see what they can do under pressure um, what they can do when when the lights are on you know and so if we can get a good evaluation of those guys that will help us make good decisions when it comes Cut down time. You finding out that Eric Winston was available. It's not often that a player of his caliber gets the open market like that. Well, you know, they in the NFL you got the waiver wire. You know, we try to be transparent, and he came across the waiver wire, uh, and we said, "Hey, the, this guy is a starter, uh, and somebody we should be interested in." And uh, you know, you make your telephone calls and, and those kind of things, and. Uh, see if uh, you can get the guy in and visit and talk to him to find out, you know, what kind of person he is, if he'd be interested and, and those kind of things. So um, that's kind of the process we went through. Obviously, you know, 
you know, you had other competition for for his services, but what do you think sold him to Kansas City? Well, I think the opportunity um, to to start for one, uh, and and so I think that that goes a long way with these guys when they're looking for places to go. Uh, I think the fact that uh, there were good people in the building, uh, and he would had a good inter interaction with the people that were in the building, uh, and I think he felt very comfortable with uh, with who we are and what we're trying to get done, and so I think that that helped. And the barbecue. Well, you know, I've heard that that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he made the rounds. Yeah, I know. Well, well, you have to recruit a little bit, you know, because you do have competition. When, when you look at him and Stroud and Boss and Hillis, these are all four guys had some strikes in the league. I mean, that, 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 that teams, for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. coaching changes, yeah. cap, whatever. I mean, what's the common thread that these four guys bring to this team? Well, the fact that uh, they've started in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, every one of them uh, have been a starter. And so when you can get that kind of experience and, and ability and add it to your team, I think that uh, that helps your team. And so we feel we feel good about those additions. I mean, so many times, I, I, I kind of asked you this the other day about you go, you know, so many times when a guy gets released, you have to figure, well, there's got to be a reason this guy, you know. Well, sure. But, but if you look at these guys, 1,000-yard rushers and, and the great year Houston had offensively, and we saw what Rob can do against you guys and, and, and Boss. I mean, these are not just rejected guys, were they? No, they, they weren't. Uh, and, and we still think that they have some gas in their tank, uh, and, uh, and, and we're going to use it, you know. Um, you know, in, in the NFL, a lot of things happen. A lot of guys become available. Um, and if you think the guy can fit in your program and in your system, um, and then you, you try to bring the guy in. Now, you're not always successful because sometimes guys have their agendas, and uh, it, it may not be here. But these guys chose us, and and uh, we feel good about it. When we were looking ahead to the uh, practice against Arizona on uh, Tuesday, right? Correct. Um, for evaluation purposes, are those practices any more important than any other practice? Uh, when you're looking at young guys trying to evaluate, are those, do you look at those films a little more critically? Yeah, I think uh, you do, because uh, they're going against a, a different person. Uh, different player that they really don't know, you know, because as you work against your own teammates, you get to know, you know, the strong points, the weak points, what they like to do and things like that. But now when you've got a completely different guy you're going against, um, it's good for us to get an evaluation to see how our players will be able to uh, to react against their players. It's all about practice, a specific practice plan. Yeah, we put a plan together, and, and the thing that I want to emphasize is that it is practice, and we're going to practice, and we're going to follow a similar script to what we do uh, in our practices, but uh, we have to kind of divide it up. So offense is going to be on one field, and the defense is going to be on the other field. And uh, so our offense will be working against their defense, and our defense will be working against their offense after – you know, you go through your walkthrough, your stretching, uh, and a little bit of individual, and now then you start the, the competitive part, you know, whether it's one-on-one, nine-on-seven, seven-on-seven, uh, team drill. So that's kind of the way to work. So more or less, it's like any other practice, just with a lot more players on it. That's right. <laughs> Is that unique for you in any of your stops where you've, I know there's been scrimmages in the, in the preseason, you know, before a game or whatnot, but sharing a, facility with another team a week for a week basically and then you play them on Friday where you practice with them and then share facilities and then play them. Yeah, I mean I've, I've done that before at other places that uh, I've been, uh, you know, have shared the facility before we played them and then in an instance after we played them they stayed over and, and you know we got to work against them. So um, both situations I, I think are similar in the fact that you're working against a different team uh, different players, and you get to evaluate uh, your guys against a different opponent. Couple more guys. Say yesterday was sluggish. Tomorrow's a day off. What that being said, what do you want to see out of this afternoon session? 
I want to see more competitiveness all the way across the board, more energy. Um, and, and sometimes, like I say, it's, it's tough when you're sore, you're tired, you got bumps and bruises, and uh, it's hot. Um, you have to be able to push yourself. Um, that's that's the way it is in athletics. And the guys who can push themselves and, and make themselves go and perform, uh, they're the ones who stand out, and they're the ones you want on the team. Last the uh, attributes you look for at a corner, are the attributes of the star any different? But generally, the star inside is matched up against the, the quicker receiver. The inside receiver is generally a, a quicker player. So the star has to have uh, coverage quickness, uh, and, and that's the biggest difference. You know? But we try to teach the similar technique uh, when we're talking about man coverage, and it's more important for the star to know where his help is and to be able to use his help. Where does the star come from? <coughs> Yeah, good question. Uh, uh, I, th I think that in, in coaching, you know, you have terms, and basically the star is, is a Sam Backer. And so rather than say Sam Backer, you say star. It starts with an S, you know. Uh, and so you have to have different terms. Last question. Coach, as you enter game week, as we're talking about, and you, you talked a little bit about the offensive line. What are your thoughts so far on what you've seen out of some of the backups, guys such as David Bims? Donald Stevenson and Jeff Allen as they're battling for some of the roster spots? Well, I think that there's good ability in the backup positions, uh, but they're still learning, you know, because they're all young. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you watch practice and, and they'll do a good job against the guy, and then the next rep they look like a rookie, you know. And so we have to develop uh, some good consistency with those guys uh, so that they can perform at a high level. All right, thank you.